All right. Uh, so, hi. I'm just going to quickly do a quick check to find out if you can hear me. So we can get you. Right. Yes, we can get you. I mean, I mean, I can get you. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, and then uh, one more test, just to find out if you can if you can see my screen right now. Precisely. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. All right. So I suppose uh, we start. Uh, sorry, this. 17. All right. Let's do... Sorry about that. I should have downloaded this beforehand, but I didn't. All right, excellent. Uh, if, if you if you want to avoid what's happening with Danny here, you want to have your email, Unza email address, uh, access your Unza email addresses issue fixed, right? Uh, I don't know if Danny fixed it. If, if this problem is from, from last year, I remember he had a similar issue you are in final year, you want to have this thing fixed. The same people that had issues last year, same issues, right? Very sad, but hey, life is sad, I suppose. All right, so um, welcome to uh, 4014. Um, nominally called or referred to as Project Information Communication Technologies. Um, and I will be your coordinator, right? I want to emphasize here coordinator, not instructor, because it turns out that uh, things are going to be done differently in 4014, and you understand just now. What I'm going to do is I'm just also going to um, pull out uh, the course syllabus document here. Uh, I should have opened it, but I just realized that I only had the 2020 document opened. Excellent. All right, um, okay. So welcome. Um, my name is Lighton Piri. I will be coordinating 4014, uh, but I will be core, if we can use the word teaching here, I'll be core teaching this course with uh, three other colleagues, um, co supervising really, in essence. Um, this is an info lecture really. Uh, just to try and put things into perspective here, uh, to remind us that we are, we are almost done. Uh, we are at the final stage of, of this BICT with education journey um, that we embarked upon many, many months ago, a couple of years ago. It's uh, quite interesting how time flies, but, but it's, almost, it's almost over. Right? This, this phase of your life is almost done, it's almost over. Um, and if I were you, I would take this very seriously, right? Uh, you want to move on in life. You, you want to go and experience life outside of Unza, right? Go out there and do amazing things rather than get stuck at Unza, repeating years and years, right? People do repeat years. I don't know, some people, I guess, like, uh, like the fact that uh, they can probably is it get money from the government uh, irrespective of how many years they repeat. I don't know if that's the case, though. But, but if I were you, I would take this very seriously so that you move on. You know, and, and, and in fact, society is, is eager to have uh, people that have done this, people that have studied these sort of courses to go out there, right? And go and impart knowledge to other people and, and go and perhaps go and contribute to society in some sort of meaningful way if, if you decide not to, to take the beaten path here. But anyway, so project, of, uh, project information communication technologies has uh, two prerequisites, uh, 2034 and 3020. And now these courses are prerequisite courses because it turns out that the activities that are going to be conducted, that you are going to conduct in this course, um, are largely going to make use of ideas and concepts that were introduced to you in 2034 and 3020. Uh, 3020, when it comes to the design and implementation of the different software artifacts that you're going to 
uh, have to uh, produce. It's a requirement for this course, fortunately or unfortunately. Um, so if you remember, part of what I, 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 I outlined or tried to bring out when we were together in 3020 was this notion that what you were doing in 3020 was um, a, a, a really a miniature variation of what you are going to do in 2014, right? Um, so you're, you're essentially going to be doing some aspects of what you did in 3020, but on a relatively large scale, right? And you're doing this throughout the, the entire year. And you're doing, it, do, you're doing this um, with the full knowledge of the process you have to go through for you to execute that sort of project, right? So which is why 3020 is a prerequisite course. Um, if you didn't actively participate in 3020, good luck to you. Um, because you have the Lord coming your way, you'd have to uh, spend time reading the ideas and concepts introduced to you in 3020. Um, 2034 is also important because this is a research-based project, right? So you, you, you're not just going to develop software, but you're, you're going to have to, um, to incorporate some aspect of science, right? Um, so for some of you, this will entail conducting some sort of empirical study, maybe trying to evaluate the software artifact or something, um, or perhaps um, going through a formal research process of collecting data before you implement the artifact. Who knows, right? Your supervisors will probably guide you on, on what you need to, to do. But again, uh, two prerequisites, 2034 and 2020. In terms of course activities here, um, the, the key activities are really going to be regular interactions that you're going to have with your assigned supervisors. Um, it turns out that uh, part of what you're going to have to do in the next coming days is you're going to have to self-organize into groups, right? Um, once you self-organize into groups, you will be allocated project supervisors. Uh, once you're allocated to project supervisors, during the execution of whatever projects are going to be working towards you will have regular interactions with these supervisors. Now, this aspect of regular interactions with supervisors is uh, obviously going to depend on who exactly you're going to be working with, as in who is going to, to be supervising the project you'll be working on. Uh, some people prefer to have more control over what's happening. Uh, I fall in that uh, camp myself. Um, so if, if it turns out that your group is going to be supervised by myself, then We'll have regular interactions, maybe weekly or something, maybe every after two weeks or something, to make sure that we're doing the correct things, to make sure that we're learning, and to keep track of who is working and who is not working. Um, but besides that, um, because we have uh, a broad spectrum of activities, um, or rather milestones that you're supposed to work towards, we shall have uh, quote unquote ad hoc uh, briefings or sessions to try and give you an idea of what is expected of you. In an ideal case, this was probably going to have to be done maybe in the first, uh, first, quarter, of, uh, first quarter of the year or something, but, but I'm, of, I'm, of, I'm of the view that we instead have regular interactions or we have these briefings maybe a week before, before you start working towards that particular milestone or deliverable. Um, in certain instances, we, we might have those, those interactions much, much earlier. Suffice to say that these interactions are pretty much going to be revision, really, because we'll be, we'll be regurgitating things that were introduced to us in 2034 and 3020. So the idea of these briefings, which is why we are calling them briefings, is just to, to try and underscore um, how what was introduced to you in 2034, for instance, fits into what you're doing in 4014, right? Anyway, so this will be in the form of what we're calling ad hoc seminars, really. Um, but also, uh, we, we sometimes tend to have departmental seminars. Uh, some, some individuals within the department supervise master's students, and these master's students give updates on what sort of progress they've made in their research. You will be invited to attend these departmental seminars. These are extremely important because they'll give you an idea of what you should be doing once you get to a certain stage in 2014. Here's the thing, some people you're going to be working with, if not all of them, who assume that you already know um, 
things associated with research because we are taught this in 2034. So no supervisor is going to sit and teach you how to collect data or how to identify an appropriate statistical test to use, how to conduct a normality test to uh, figure out whether or not your data set is normally distributed or not. Um, no supervisor is going to sit and teach you how to code, how to manage a project, how to develop a gun chart because these things are already taught to you, right? Um, I thought I'll put it out there. Um, so, which is why I mean, attending some of these seminars might be useful because you pick up one or two things, right? What the supervisors might do though is maybe try and suggest that you try and uh, potentially use a particular data collection technique uh, or maybe explore um, a particular measurement instrument that might be useful in collecting data when, when you get to that stage. Um, another core activity obviously is uh, uh, assessments, and, and I get to talk about these assessments and how they are broken down shortly, but, but just to put it out there that, that uh, we have um, two core assessments. So there are marks that are ascribed to the first part of the course, which is to do with the proposal, development of the proposal. Um, and, and so you get to develop a proposal document, which you already know how to develop because this was introduced to you in 2034 and also in 2020. And then you will get to do a proposal presentation as a group. Um, there will be marks allocated to the final project report. Now those marks are even, not evenly, but they're they are further clustered uh, into three broad categories. So, so if you happen to work on a project that will involve you developing a software artifact or a project whose core focus is the development of a software artifact, um, part of the marks will be distributed towards implementation. So the design, requirements, elicitation, specification, design and implementation of the software artifact, including the demonstration um, and, and, and also the um, production or writing or drafting of the final report um, and the summary paper associated with the report, but also the final project presentation. Okay. Um, and so to give you an idea of, of this broad spectrum of activities we're going to be conducting here, there's a, there's a draft milestone, um, I don't want to create this milestone document, this is embedded within the course syllabus, which is going to be available on the Moodle here. You'll find it on the last page. Um, this thing here has uh, specifics of what sort of key activities you're going to be working towards, key milestones and deliverables. If those milestones or if those deliverables are meant to be graded, there are dates associated with, um, with, with those milestones or with those deliverables and specifics of who is responsible, what sort of action is required. Um, so to give you an example, for instance, you are expected to form groups uh, this is students, by the way, not, not supervisors. You're expected to form groups uh, by 5th March, right? And then you'll be assigned supervisors uh, by or on March 12th. You'll be expected to come up with uh, descriptions of these projects that you're going to be working towards um, by March 19th, right? Anyways. All right, all right. Um, the, the other deliverables, obviously, um, I guess of interest, when you look at this, 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 uh, this list of, of the, when you look at this list of activities or milestones, you want to pay particular attention to things that are going to be graded and when they're going to be graded when they are due, right? So things like the literature synthesis, the proposal, document, the presentation, when it's going to be done, uh, granted these are tentative dates. So things like the proposal presentation will probably be done over the course of two days, if not three days, um, because we'll have uh, all the members of staff in the department, or at least those are, that are actively participating in ICT 4014, grade the proposal presentation. Um, so because of that, we'll probably, we'll probably have um, a situation where we'll have to, to have these activities performed over maybe a course of two, maybe three days or something. Um, and then things like uh, the various iterations and draft documents that you're going to have to, 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 to produce, right? Uh, in terms of uh, recommended textbooks, um, so the syllabus itself, this document has um, a list of prescribed and recommended textbooks that are in the program document. Um, but in my opinion, uh, 
I think that there's certain pieces of text that you will find tremendously useful as you are working towards. So besides these things that you find in the program document, besides these things, which, which in my opinion are a bit outdated, I guess, I don't know, but uh, that's me. Besides, besides these prescribed and recommended textbooks, you probably want to look up, uh, or you, you want to look up uh, the, following, the following textbooks that I'm going to walk you through. just three of them, really. Um, this is not supposed to be software engineering. It's supposed to be called The Craft of Research uh, by Booth et al. Um, very useful if you want to familiarize yourself with the process of uh, formulating a problem statement and deriving uh, research objectives and research questions. Um, if, if I were you, I would, I would probably look for this book and bookmark it because you probably, you will, not probably, you will use this as a reference when you're developing a proposal and especially once you start writing that final report. Another book that you will find tremendously useful once you get to this, this, this stage when you, you, you start collecting data and analyzing data really and coming up with your methodology section actually in the proposal is uh, this book by, uh, um, by uh, Cresswell and Cresswell, right? Um, I never quite realized that uh, the, vision of, <laughs> the vision of this book that I have used in the past, the previous version, and it was just written by John Cresswell, but, but I decided maybe I would, I, would, I would recommend that you go for the fifth edition, which is the most recent uh, edition, I suppose. But I didn't realize that it's, it's authored by, uh, these are all Chris Rose. I don't know if they're brothers. These days you never know, maybe these people are married or something. But, but here's the thing. So it's research design, qualitative, quantitative, and mixed method approaches, right? A classic, you'll find this tremendously useful. Um, I would add this to your arsenal of, uh, of, um, of books or literature that you want to use as a reference between now and uh, when you submit that final report, when you do the final presentation. Um, another book that you will find useful is uh, Experimentation in Software Engineering, especially if you're one of those who's going to work on a project that is going to heavily involve the implementation of software and the empirical evaluation of that software artifact. Um, turns out that uh, this book outlines exactly what sort of process you have to, uh, you, you, you would have to go through insofar as empirical software engineering is concerned really. Right. If you take a more uh, quantitative approach uh, to the design of, of the research that you're going to be co conducting. Um, also, some, some resources in terms of software tools, the project itself, are tools that were introduced to you in 3020 last year. Um, I would stick to uh, Lucy Chart, which unfortunately, I don't know how I forgot to include it here. I'll stick to Lucy chart uh, myself, if I were you, it, it, it's ideal for producing aesthetically pleasing diagrams. Uh, it's ideal because you'll be wake, wake, working with other people, right? you'll be collaborating with other people. Um, but besides, besides those tools, I mean, there are other alternatives that were introduced to you, things like uh, Project Libre and Dia, for instance. Once you start writing software or developing software, you will find Git tremendously useful here. In some instances, uh, some of your supervisors will recommend certain software frameworks to quicken the process of developing software. Um, uh, if you're lucky, some supervisors will recommend this or will prescribe this. I, I know for individuals that I'll, I'll be working with, I will probably recommend uh, certain frameworks just because it would be much easier for you to, to write software that way using frameworks. Um, all right, so as an example, I guess if, if you work with somebody who is obsessed with Java, they might uh, prescribe to use a Spring MVC framework or something. All right, uh, whatever course resources that need to be shared with you um, will be shared via the official or one of the three official learning management platforms endorsed by the University of Zambia. In our case for this course, it's the Moodle platform. Um, so it's everything from, uh, this, this, is, uh, this was supposed to be changed here. 
everything from things like uh, briefings or ad hoc seminars I talked about, these will be uploaded onto the Moodle, um, but also assignments, because it turns out that these activities that I, I briefly um, beamed up here in this slide, it turns out that uh, the things that are supposed to be gr graded here will be specified on the Moodle, right, with, with, with deadlines, corresponding deadlines. Of course, these are submitted as a group because this is a group-based project. Uh, so you want to make sure that uh, to avoid some of the iffy issues that happened last year, once you form these groups, you want to ensure that you designate one or two people, perhaps even three, that will have regular access or stable access to Moodle to upload assessments on your behalf, on behalf of the group. There, there are groups in 3020 that lost marks um, because the people that uh, were supposed to upload these things for some reason were unable to upload um, uh, the assessments. All right, uh, so specifics on how the, the, the split of the, of the different assessment categories uh, clustered is as follows here. Uh, so the proposal accounts for 40%. 30% uh, goes towards the proposal document. 10% uh, goes towards the proposal presentation. Um, again, specifics of how the 30%, for instance, will be distributed, will be shared with you once the assessment is prepared and made available via the Moodle. Specifics of how this 10% of the proposal presentation will be further subcategorized, will be shared with you once this thing, um, once the assessment, the corresponding assessment is made available to you. Um, and the same goes for the final report itself. What you notice is that uh, for the final report, for instance, 50% is going to be uh, allocated to the, the report itself, and then 10% is going to be allocated to the final presentation, the oral presentation. The 50% is further broken down depending on what the focus of the project is going to be. Again, the focus of the project is going to be agreed upon with your respective supervisors. Is, is that a question? Can somebody just switch on their microphone? Is that a question? Okay. Maybe you want to switch off your microphone wherever you are. I don't know who you are. You stay alive. Why? Thank you. We've done this. We've done this a uh, couple of times. We should know. I think there's still someone who has their microphone. Anyways. Could someone just uh, reach out to Elias in the sidelines? He's doing it again, right? I don't know. He decided to put his microphone on again. I don't want to remove him. It's bad form, right? Etiquette, very important. All right. Um, so as an example here on how Max is broken down, to give you an example of uh, the project, for instance, the, 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 the project proposal document is 30% is going to be split up as follows, right? So the, the actual document, once you write that document, the grading is going to be done in such a manner that uh, we try and see if the project description is adequately presented, problem statement, and then there are specific marks allocated to this 30%. So all of this is out of the 100, and the, this 100 is further scaled down to 30%, obviously. Um, and of course, this is marked by your supervisors, but there's going to be some sort of quite assurance, hopefully, where you have uh, a, a, a third party try and verify the grading itself. All right, um, the, 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 the course grades don't change. These are specific to the School of Education. Um, if, you, if you've forgotten um, about how, how the different grades are associated with the um, score ranges, uh, you want to look at slide number 16 at your own time. Um, this will also give you an insight of the grade points associated with the different score ranges. This is important because uh, your degree classification is uh, based on the so-called grade point average. In fact, 
for you to graduate, you need to make sure that you've attained the minimum grade point average threshold, right? So this is important stuff here. Um, but I guess the other thing to, to note here, this hasn't changed, for you to pass this course, you need to get at least 45%. Here's the thing, if you think that because this is project based and you can't fail, you're mistaken, right? There is such a thing as failing. You want to take this very seriously. And if I were you, I would take this very seriously, right? You want to leave Unza, you want to move on. You want to pay your debt. 90%, more than 90% of you have debts to pay. You need to pay back to the, the, the taxpayers, right? To the government, apparently. And for you to start paying back, you need to leave Unza. I don't know about you, but by the time I was getting to fourth year, I was, I was done with Unza. I'd had enough of Unza and I just wanted to leave, right? I wanted to move on. Um, but that's you, I guess. The project, right? Doing this project, when you're doing this project, uh, when you're pushed in a corner, especially when you're not working, it's very easy to get tempted. Get tempted so that you start cheating, right? You will be caught, I assure you. They will catch you. Uh, if I were you, I would refrain from any form of academic dishonesty. If you notice that a fellow group member is doing something that's untoward, either you just blatantly tell them that uh, that's something that the, the group shouldn't uh, uh, shouldn't probably do, or you anonymously reach out to the supervisor, right? Because once 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 they discover, once your supervisor discovers that you've been cheating, and it's very easy, by the way, to figure out that you've been cheating, right? The entire group is going to be penalized. I have worked with groups that have done this in the past. I have worked with groups that have been so lazy that last year I was working with a group that only decided to become serious after they were done with the final exam. And guess what? The performance was horrible, right? It was horrible. E effectively, they did nothing in the, in, in the project itself, right? So you want to think about this very, very carefully, right? You want to take this very seriously. You, you want to see ICT 4014 as an opportunity for you to learn something new from people that have been doing these things for years, right? Most, most of the people you're going to be working with will likely, for people that will recommend projects, will likely recommend projects in their areas of expertise. Because they are recommending projects in their areas of expertise, they know the ins and outs of whatever problem space you're going to be exploring. It should be an opportunity for you to learn something new. Maybe learn some some novel computing technique that wasn't introduced to you in any of the courses that you did, who knows, right? Maybe pick up some new skill, learn, learn a particular framework that perhaps might, might, might put you at an advantage when you're applying for jobs once you leave UNSA, because like it or not, that's what some of you are going to be doing. Maybe pick up a skill by way of learning a new framework or a new programming language so that by the time you're leaving, maybe you'll talk some of your colleagues into setting up something, right? Business, a startup. This is only possible if you are willing to learn. And you can only learn if you do the right things. And that, that entails not cheating, by the way. But hey, uh, people just never learn, right? We had this conversation in first year. You were cheating in second year. I'm sure Pierre and the other lecturers had this conversation with you in second year. You were cheating in third year. We had a conversation in third year. I know there are still going to be characters that are going to cheat, right? Life is like that. There are always bad elements in whatever sect of society you find yourself in. Bad people are everywhere, horrible people, right? Uh, just pray to the gods that you are not part of a group which is going to be composed of bad people. Or, or if you find yourself in such a situation, you should be firm. You should be firm because this is what you're going to do once you go out there in industry, right? I go through this at, at my workplace right now, not the cheating part, but 
sometimes I have to be firm, I have to stand my ground. If a colleague is doing something that I'm uncomfortable with, I stand my ground. Or I make it known that I, I don't want to be a part of it, right? Um, you must learn to do this because it's not going, it's not going away any anytime soon. You will find it once you leave Unza, or we don't know if you find it once you die, but hey. So listen, besides uh, the, the mood on here, um, something else that we are going to use extensively as per tradition is a cost mailing list. You've all been added to the ICT 4014 cost mailing list. Um, please uh, make sure that you reach out to Lighton. If you have not yet started receiving emails via your UNSA assigned email address, uh, because there's already something that was sent out here. The mailing list, right? Um, in terms of the instructors, I'm calling them instructors, these are pretty much supervisors. Um, it's essentially the faculty staff that have actively participated in, in teaching you uh, courses, um, at, at first year, second year, third year, and perhaps the fourth year as well. So once you form these groups, you will be assigned these supervisors, four of them, uh, but Lighton will be coordinating the course. Uh, so if you need to reach out, uh, if you have an issue, that has to do with the project, you reach out to the coordinator. All right, and uh, because of what's going on, at least uh, until you guys are physically back on campus, which hopefully is uh, uh, during the second half of the year, um, interaction or reaching out to Lighton is by appointment only. Um, so check out his calendar and then send an email to schedule uh, an interaction with him. Um, again, to reiterate this notion of regular interaction with uh, 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 research supervisors in, in terms of course administration, um, it turns out that uh, supervision style, like I said, is different. Some supervisors will insist that you regularly meet with them perhaps every week, maybe, maybe every after two weeks. Some supervisors will probably insist that uh, you come up with an initiative to reach out to them if you need help or something, I don't know. Um, different people work differently. Uh, so, but you want to make sure that you're on top of things as, as a group. You will agree on meeting times, if they're going to be meeting times with your respective supervisors once you are assigned either one of these four supervisors here. All right, uh, in terms of the, um, the details of um, the schedule for the course, uh, you want to bookmark the course calendar so this course calendar will, will be uh, ascribed with both the ad hoc sessions that I spoke about, but more importantly, these, uh, hmm, these uh, course activities that I spoke about, right? So please bookmark uh, people who don't listen here. I hope you'll be able to listen to your supervisor. You want to bookmark the course calendar, which is uh, there. That course calendar will have um, uh, details of when these ad hoc interactions such as this one are going to take place, right? Um, when the specific, specific um, milestones or due dates, um, or specific things, deliverables and milestones are due, right? Uh, so if we look at, uh, I guess the agenda here, the agenda should be able to give us a good enough uh, idea of what to expect here. So all of these things have been penciled in. Of course, these are tentative dates, right? Now, tentative because of uh, what's going on here, it's likely that they will change. Um, but if I were you, <clears throat> I would make sure that you're on top of things and, and, and really just work as hard as you can so that you, you cover as much ground as you can, at least before you physically arrive back on campus. The different supervisors will tell you to take a different approach, but one of the things you want to do as you're working towards this project is to ensure that you have a firm grasp of what exactly is going to be expected of you, what sort of problem you're going to be working towards, and how you're going to tackle that problem in the first half of the year. That's my recommendation here. Uh, <clears throat> But uh, you can just advice, you can take it or leave it. Um, again, the, 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 the thing, the course, um, the course calendar has details of these different activities that you're working towards. These are hard deadlines. There are marks that will be deducted. 
um, if you do not submit these things on time, you want to make sure that you submit these things on time. Marks will be deducted even if you submit one minute after the deadline. All right, I'm just gonna pause here and uh, try and uh, find out if there are any questions so far uh, before we just briefly walk towards uh, these key activities here. We're just gonna quickly skim through the key activities so that you have a firm sense of what exactly you're going to be doing. Uh, any thoughts, comments, complaints, clarifications or Or anything? Yes, sir. Yeah. Is it is it allowed to maintain like if you try to maintain the the group for last day? Sorry. Is it possible that we can maintain groups for last day, like those who are willing to maintain the groups? Yeah, that's a good question, Daniel. Right? I mean, so if you remember what I said, and the, the simple answer there is, uh, if I were you, I would say yes depending on what your experience was like working with, with that group, right? If I were you, I would say yes, because maybe you know those people better, I don't know. But it turns out that, um, and I talk about this, you are forming groups of at least five. Last year it was groups of between, was it three or four or something? I, don't, I can't remember. Four or five, what, what was the threshold? Last year it was uh, five. The maximum okay. was five. Okay, yeah, but this time around the minimum is five, right? So, so yes, you can maintain the groups if you want, but you want to keep an open mind, right? Perhaps uh, you might want to experience life working with other people that uh, maybe you've noticed people do things a certain way. Maybe you, you not, you've noticed somebody who does things in, in an interesting way, right? In a way that you like the most. There's no harm in you just... Uh, reaching out to them and uh, forming that group. If you want, I can, I don't know what we can do here, but we can do this in the sidelines, but I was going to say we can set up a wiki on the Moodle site so that you, 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 you so that we make it a lot easier for you to find people to work with, but you want to keep an open mind. Here's the thing, even if, uh, uh, and you must, this must sink in, right? You must remember that in life, you rarely have choices. Nobody chose to be born to the parents they have right now. You do not choose who you are going to be working with once you leave Unza. I did not choose to work with the people I'm working with in the department right now. I did not choose to work with the people that I'm working with at Unza. In some instances, there are people that I'm forced to work with even if I don't feel comfortable with their approach or with their work ethic, right? But I have to because sometimes you don't have a choice. And, and I guess the point I'm trying to drive at here is, even if perhaps you don't like the way somebody works or the way somebody behaves, maybe this would be an opportunity for you to teach yourself how to tolerate such people. Keep an open mind, right? People have different talents in life. The people that you think, oh, this person doesn't know how to code or this person failed and whatnot, you'd be surprised what they're capable of doing. Maybe they, they, they are going to be really good at a certain aspect of this, I mean, ICT 4014, right? You want to keep an open mind here. If I were you, I would keep an open mind, but of course, uh, you never listen, which is fine, right? I'm just uh, sharing my life experiences, and I've had quite the experience. I've had experiences doing what you're doing right now. I did this when I was an undergraduate student. Well, scratch that. Uh, I worked on the Capstone project alone, right? I didn't work it. I, I didn't work on that thing as part of a group. You know, I feel uncomfortable. This group-based project, I did it alone. But but I didn't choose the course supervisor, right? I was doing a project with the the Solar Energy Lab in the in the um, Department of Physics, right? Um, because the tool I was developing had to do with some sort of uh, instrument they were using there. But I, had to, I didn't choose to work with uh, the other person who was working on that, on that project. Right? So you want to keep an open mind, and this is important, right? This is thinking. Remember, once you leave the UNS and you start looking for a job, you will never know who you are going to work with, which is why you need to learn how to interact with people right now. Any other thoughts or comments? That's an interesting question, Danny. Thank you very much. Any comments or thoughts? 
You're welcome, sir. Sorry to take you bend. I heard you saying five would be the mean. What would be the max? No, it's, it's actually it's groups of five here. But because, listen, if we say five, it can't be five exactly, right? There'll probably one, there'll be one or two groups right, that will have four instead of five. But we are aiming form groups of five. All right. Thank you. If you're un unable to form a group of five at a stage when everybody else is already part of the group, you will reach out to the course coordinator, Lighton, and then you work out a plan. You, you'll be exempted to forming a group of four or something. But it's groups of five. There's a reason why you need to form groups of five. The groups of five need to be mapped onto the um, faculty staff that we Your mic is muted. I guess the uh, oh thank you. My no, it's not muted. It's can, yeah. you, can you not hear me? I don't know. Maybe your speakers are muted. Yeah, I can hear you now. A any other questions? Excellent, thanks. Uh uh Doc, uh just oh, how are you? Welcome back, yes. sir. How are you? Um uh, well, yeah, thank you. Thank um, you for welcome back as well, and good luck with the remaining year here. It's the final. This is a uh, the final level, right? When, yeah, 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 killing yeah. the big boss or something if you play games. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. Sir. Uh, yeah, well, just on the instructors, is it uh, how, how will it be selected and uh, will us as groups uh, be able to also choose instructors or it's just random? <clears throat> no, it's, uh, it's not going to run. Well, it's, I guess you could say it's random. You are going to be assigned uh, instructors, unfortunately. This time around, we are, because we're doing this for the first time in 11.10, we are going to assign you to supervisors. Um, but hopefully going forward, uh, maybe the subsequent cohorts will be given an opportunity to choose. So you will be assigned instructors. Uh, instructors, uh, randomly. Yeah, we, we, we had... Uh, we had wanted to do a bidding. Maybe we can. I can talk my colleagues into doing a bidding process where, but but yeah, it's too late now, I guess. But it will be random. Thanks for that question. But but just like and this is an important question, right? Here's the thing about life: is people that you see, right? You. It's, it's, it's not always possible for people to know everything there is to know out there. You want to keep an open mind. You may not have liked uh, maybe the way a certain lecturer maybe handled a course or taught, but you'd be surprised as to what sort of experience you will have once you are supervised by them in 4014. Supervision is different from lecturing, right? You, you probably have uh, more intimate interactions with the supervisors in some instances, right? So you might look at someone and think, oh, this person is rough or this person doesn't know X, but you'd be surprised, right? There's a reason why these people are hired by owns in the first place, right? It should be something they're good at. So if I were you, I'd keep an open mind. Um, there's always something to learn in life. And I assure you, everybody is going to learn something here. It's unfortunate that you can't be supervised by everybody in the department, um, but life is like that, right? Just like you can't be a doctor and an IT expert and an engineer at the same time, right? Segregation or separation of concerns, it's important, right? Any other thoughts or comments? Okay, if there are no comments, um, then what I'm going to do, right, quickly is um, I'm going I'm to so, ask... Uh, there, are, there are some people who raised their hands. Oh, okay. Uh, let's check them out. I, I guess I should have mentioned that uh, it's all... Fine. Peter, we'll start with you. And then we'll go to Wope. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. Yep. Uh, yeah, on the issue of uh, uh, instructors, I don't know. Yes, in as much as we may not be able to choose our own but you know there are some who who may 
not to not to really say they're unprofessional, but they just the way they handle certain matters. You find that maybe last academic year you did something and they were not happy with it, then they hold that issue even to the next academic year and it might affect someone's uh, performance. So is there a way you could uh, exempt such kind of situation you know, by maybe you could find a way to avoid certain individuals to be yeah, are supervised by certain lecturers? And unfortunately, that's not possible, right? So there's, there's a couple of interesting things that are coming out of there, right? You seem to be making the assumption that, I, I guess it's human nature, some human beings hold grudges. <laughs> I want to put it out there that uh, I have trained myself not to do that. If you think I hold a grudge towards you, you're mistaken. I never do that. Uh, I never do that, right? Uh, you'd be surprised how I interact with people that perhaps might have done something untoward here. Uh, maybe you've noticed me doing that for some people here, but that's the way I am, right? But again, the other part to that is that you don't get to choose in life, Peter, right? We, unfortunately, we have a restricted pool of supervisors. Just like supervisors will not choose students, you will not choose students because I have no control who Peter is going to choose to work with. Assuming there was somebody, I, perhaps uh, for some weird reason, there's somebody who is part of Peter's group that I don't like, what would I do then, right? If they're part of Peter's group. I guess what, it's, what, part of what I'm trying to say is it's not possible that that lecturer, even if they had a grudge, for some, if, if for some reason they did have a grudge, <laughs> right, with you, it's not possible that they would have grudges for all five of you. You understand this? But the most important thing here is we don't get to choose sometimes. And this is one such time, Peter, when it's difficult to choose, unfortunately. I hope that uh, that helps address your question. So the answer is uh, it's not possible to exempt as you uh, refer to that process. All right, Ms. Kawe. Okay, and I don't know if she realized that she had her, her hand up here. Um, if there are no questions, then I want to quickly move to the next part of this interaction. It's going to be short, short interaction here, but just to remind us that uh, there's something that we're working towards in 4014. Um, the certain objectives that we're working towards, uh, once we attend these objectives, we would have confirmed um, that, that you've been taught 4014, right? So at, at the end of this course, everybody should be able to write a research project proposal. Uh, the vast majority of you are going to have to learn this because you'll be doing this. Those of you that are going to take the beaten path, where if you're, you're paying back uh, the powers that be here, and you find yourself in an environment where you're, you're teaching the learners how to do this. Some of you will find yourself uh, doing uh, teaching at a level like Lighton and Tuesday and PL as well. There are a number of places that are offering these programs now, right? You'll be doing this, so you better learn how to do this. So the goal is uh, for you to be able to write a research project proposal. Even if you're doing this as a group, the assumption will be uh, at the end of this, or if you pass this course and we assume that you'll be in a position to do this, you should be able to design, implement, and evaluate software artifacts using well-established software engineering principles introduced to you in 3020. You should be able to collect data, um, perhaps using the software artifact, uh, using techniques introduced to you in 2034, obviously. So in most of these things you notice that you're putting to practice what was taught you in 2034 and in 3020, yeah? You should be able to analyze the data collected, right? And at this stage, really using appropriate statistical techniques, all the fancy things that Dr. Kander introduced to you. Say, well, if you collect this sort of data, let's say you're evaluating two different uh, software artifacts, you should be able to figure out what sort of statistical technique you're going to use to analyze the data collected, right? You should be able to perform, is it normality tests or something to figure out whether the data is normally distributed or, or not. Once you do that, you identify whether you're going to perform an ANOVA test, is it a student t-test or something, or the fancy things introduced to you, right? You should be able to write a formal research project report. This is part of the dissemination process, right? 
once you embark upon a long-term project, in this case, this project is going to be undertaken in almost a year. At the end of the year, you should be able to write a project report outlining what was done, and more importantly, the key findings from that project. Part of the dissemination process is what feeds into the 10% when you do the final project uh, presentation, the oral project presentation. And in fact, the dissemination process transcends just that oral presentation. You'll notice that uh, some of these things that you're going to be producing, right, if you go to the, uh, um, if you go to the last page of the syllabus, what you'll notice is that there are certain, certain deliverables here. Uh, demonstration, there's going to be a poster, there's going to be a reflection, reflection paper, uh, there'll be a website, project website, and then if things work out, we want to organize an, a public showcase where hopefully, I hope COVID-19 won't prevent us from doing this, but we can always buy masks, right? We will invite some people to come through and get to see what you people have been up to. And part of, what, part of why we want to do this is we have certain uh, partners, I guess this is quote on court, it's in courts here because it's still work in progress. We want to invite them because we, we are hopeful that maybe some of them might use this as an opportunity to identify people that they can potentially recruit, right? This is what happens elsewhere. But anyway, so, so this is part of the dissemination process, right? The 10% you're going to be working towards. All right, so th these are the, the learning objectives associated with the course. And in terms of the specifics here, um, the first part is just going to be a, a process of group selection and assignment of supervisors and um, specification of projects, the descriptions of the projects that you're going to be working on. Um, and then identifying specific roles within the groups. I guess you know how to do this thing as you're introduced to this process in 3020. Um, and this is important. You want to make sure that you have designated roles, right? This is how you work as a pack. You want to make sure that people do specific things here. People that are going to be uploading things, uh, making sure that uh, documents, uh, the correct versions are uploaded, uh, you know, the rest matrix thing we discussed here, it's going to be tremendously useful here. Um, granted, this is going to be done in conjunction with your supervisors in some instances. Um, so, so this process is going to, it's, it starts on March 5th, it goes on all the way up to March 26th. So you notice that it starts with you forming groups by Friday this week, you being assigned supervisors by Friday after next week, you coming up with descriptions by March 19th, right? You coming up with roles by March 26th, right? And, and then we, 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 we do this a step at a time. So in terms of specifics here, right? The first part that's um, highlighted in that red bounding box. Um, as Elia mentioned, you want to form groups of five students. If there's a short for, if you're unable to form groups of five in an instance where there's no one left to make up for that shortfall. You reach out to the uh, course coordinator, Lighton, um, and then you'll be exempted from forming a group of five. You'll then form a group of four. But ideally, you are supposed to form groups of five. Um, once you do this, like I said, you'll be assigned uh, supervisors. Um, once you're assigned supervisors, specifics will be given to you. This will be outlined in the form of uh, an assignment, a non-grade assignment on the Moodle, um, but details will be provided to you. The process you go through is you reach out, you initiate contact with the supervisor. In some instances, maybe some supervisors will initiate contact with some, but you are supposed to initiate contact with the supervisors. To say we were assigned you as a supervisor, uh, we want to arrange an initial meeting or something. Can you share your free slots or something because you are, you're not uh, co-located, right? You're doing this report remotely in the first half of the year. So whatever meeting you're gonna have with your supervisor will have to be done remotely, yeah? And then the next stage, once you assign the supervisor, or once you assign supervisors, is you come up with project uh, descriptions. Now the approach we're taking as a department this year is we're taking a hybrid approach where students will perhaps be, depending on the supervisor we'll be working with, that supervisor might give you the opportunity or might insist that you suggest 
a problem that you are going to work on. Remember, it's a problem. You are working towards the problem. You identify a problem. We went through this process. You identify a problem. You don't just wake up and say you're going to develop this software. You, you are developing a, soft, a software artifact because you are attempting to solve the problem. So the super, some supervisors will insist that you come up with a problem specification and then you refine it together with them. Some supervisors prefer a completely different approach where they will send you a list of problems, say, you will work on this problem, or they will tell you to say, I have a list of these problems, choose one as a group. Or let's have a discussion about these uh, problems, uh, problems, and then uh, tell me which one you, you want to settle for. Right? Um, again, the other part is a specification of the team roles. You do this in conjunction with the supervisors, obviously. Remember, you want to develop some sort of a, a relationship with your supervisor early on, make an impression early on, uh, push for, for regular meetings if the supervisor does not do that. Some supervisors will not, will not uh, drop a schedule for you to say, let's meet weekly or ever after two weeks. So just throw in the deep end. It's fine, right? We were brought up differently in life. You'll be supervised differently. Uh, and it makes sense because these supervisors went to different schools. They were supervised and advised by different people when they're doing their masters and their PhDs, right? So their style of supervision in some instances is borrowed from the interactions they had wherever it is they were, or perhaps past experience because all of these people are going to be interacting with have been supervising other students. In the process, they've figured out systems that work for them. Systems that work, or a system that works for Lighton is not a system that works for Piela, it's not a system that works for Edward, it's not a system that works for Mr. Walia. Right, so don't expect that the style of supervision by Piela is going to be the same as the style of supervision by Lighton. All right. Um, the next part, uh, sometime in April, tentatively April 16th, is going to be um, uh, the initial literature synthesis is going to be due. Um, this is nothing more than you just identifying key work associating, associated with the problem space you're going to be exploring. And you know this process. You went through this in 2034. We briefly touched on it in 3020 as well. Right. Uh, again, this will be contextual. It will depend on the type of problem that you're going to be working toward. It will depend on the advice be, being given to you as you regularly meet by your supervisors. Some supervisors will tell you to say, go and explore this particular theory so that you understand the problem space. Some supervisors will point you to specific key work, existing literature, say, go and read this. Some supervisors will not tell you to go and read anything. They'll leave you to fend for yourself, right? It's all part of learning, it's fine. Um, the next part is going to be um, development of the proposal itself. There are some three key things here. The, the first thing is you're going to have to develop the proposal document together with, the, with your supervisors, obviously. This thing is due on May 7th. Um, if I were you, you do not have to wait until a week before May 7th for you to start working towards this proposal. You have an idea of what it takes to develop a proposal. You can already start working towards some of these things, maybe by way of identifying an appropriate template. You prepare those documents, you set them up. Uh, maybe you prepare some shared uh, Google Drive document that you're going to be using as, as a project team. You prepare these things in advance. And you start working towards this thing. You don't have to wait until then, right? But anyway, so the proposal document is going to be due on May 7th. Um, specifics of this particular assignment will be shared with you once all of these, all of these, uh, everything that comes after the, the team role identification, team role identification activity, all of these assignments will be made available on the Moodle in advance. Right, it's, it's that we'll be tweaking the, the dates as we progress because maybe things are bound to change or something. I don't know. But after, after, after you submit the proposal, the next thing is going to be presentation of the proposals, the week after you submit your proposals. 
And then using comments that are going to come through from the supervisors and the list staff that are going to attend your proposal presentations. And in fact, comments from postgraduate students that will be invited to attend your proposals, you will be expected to refine your proposals and submit a revised proposal by May 20, 2028. Um, all right. So these are the things that you are essentially going to be working towards. The initial proposal document, the project, project proposal presentation, and then the final project uh, proposal document. Um, the initial version of the project website is going to be due on June 4th. Uh, this is part of the dissemination process. You will be expected to, to come up with a project website where you'll be documenting the different deliverables and milestones associated with the project. So it is, uh, specific, specifics of who your supervisor is, what problem you're working towards, all these things are going to go on the project website. Um, and then something else you're working towards uh, after that is uh, implementation of the software artifact in the event that this is the core focus of your project. Uh, even though we, uh, we don't expect you to do this, but recommending that you <clears throat> you take an excuse me you take an agile technique um, you use an agile technique where you, you iterate through three iterations right so we expect you to come up with an initial version of whatever it is you're working towards by July second where you you'll be able to demonstrate just uh, some basic functionality associated with what you're developing and then at some point you start the actual implementation with maybe a paper prototype, and then you, you go through the second iteration, and then the third iteration, the final iteration. Um, again, you, your supervisors will be able to advise on what exactly you need to be doing as you're going through these different, uh, these different phases <coughs> in some instances. Um, the actual write-up, the way we plan this is the actual write-up is supposed to start in July 9th, right? And it starts with the, with chapter two, which is a related way called uh, literature review chapter. Um, we feel that by July 9th, you'd have gotten to a stage where you would have, um, you would have uh, had a firm sense of what you're working towards, the problem you're working towards. So uh, at which stage you should be able to churn out the initial version of your chapter two. Right, so, but there's more when it comes to writing, right? It's not just a background chapter. We, we, think that uh, it's important to we come up with a hard, hard deadline associated with the implementation and evaluation chapters. These are due on September 24th. This is to help you quickly work towards this report, by the way. Uh, even though it's not being marked, but this will be strictly adhered to, and your supervisors will expect that you submit these things on those dates, unless if they change. Uh, all right, I mean, so some other things you're going to be doing here is coming up with an initial outline of your final report, right? So just some scaffold or some skeleton of the final report itself. Um, and then the initial draft will be due on October 15th, right? So the complete report, but the draft version, which your supervisor is going to look at, uh, and again, this is a firm deadline. Uh, you incorporate whatever comments are going to come through from your supervisor um, for you to come up with the final report. I think it's two weeks late or something. All right, uh, and then there's going to be, besides the final project report, which is probably going to be 40 to 50 pages uh, in length, um, you will also be expected to submit a, an unabridged or a summarized version of the report itself, uh, which is going to be 10 pages long. Right? So just a summary of the report itself. All, all of these two things are going to be due on October 29th. All right, and then so in terms of like the auxiliary deliverables I spoke about, there's a project website, there are marks allocated to all these things. Um, the poster, right, you'll be given specifics of uh, specifications of the poster. Usually this is an A4, maybe A5 poster, something we are going to stick up in the, in the Odell laboratory perhaps, or maybe things that we can showcase maybe on the fourth floor, somewhere near the HOD's office to, to try and uh, showcase to people to say, this is, this is what our students are capable of doing, right? So in terms of the auxiliary deliverables here, you notice that the syllabus itself has uh, these things outlined. Number 22, 23, 24, and 25. 
These are the auxiliary deliverables. This is all part of the uh, dissemination process, right? It's a good thing for you. It'd be a way of learning new skills that you will find um, in, in industry once you leave the owns, you're leaving very, very soon. Um, again, just put it out there that uh, the last part here is, uh, we, we are not certain whether it's going to take place or not. We hope it does take place. And in fact, in an ideal case, we'd want to combine this with our other, other programs in the department, if they'll be ready. If not, we'll just do it as uh, the Bachelor of ICTs with Education. We want to make this grand, right? It would be a nice way of uh, wrapping up uh, or, or, or showcasing what the initial cohort of students graduating in this program are capable of doing. And I have hope and faith that you guys are going to do bigger and greater things once you leave very, very soon, next few months, actually. Listen, in terms of closing remarks here, you want to take this very seriously, right? You want to take this very seriously, especially when it comes to deadlines here. They are going to be very firm and head the deadlines marks will be deducted. There's a possibility that you might fail if you don't take this seriously. Do not cheat. For some of you, I wrote to you because you were caught cheating. You thought you were not going to be caught cheating. You were cheating in the test by sharing the same resources. Some of you were copy pasting things from Wikipedia. I wrote to you. I was writing to you because at this stage, it's going to be taken very seriously, right? And I, I think by now, I think the OZA has probably invested money in uh, plagiarism detect, de detection software or something. I don't know how far they've gone here. You want to learn how to do your own things and not cheat and just copy things online. It's bad, right? Uh, also, just to reiterate the fact that uh, just like 3020, and I think in 2034, when you're working in groups, and these are the causes where we are working in groups, the relative success in whatever it is you're going to be doing is hinged or is premised on everybody else chipping in and you being serious with what you're doing. You taking up the initiative and reaching out to your supervisors if they are not organizing meetings. You be fair. If you want to, and there are people that are like that, right? they want to do their work themselves, you'll be punishing yourself, right? You want to make sure, even if you are good at something, you want to make sure that everybody chips in because there'll come a time when you'll be swamped with work and you will not be able to do this project. There's a reason why this is carved out as a five-man team because the complexity that's going to be carved out with the supervisors is going to take into account that there are five human beings working on the project. Some supervisors who actually carve out the project in such a manner that all the five team members are working on different aspects of the project, right? So you want to push your colleagues here and we learned how to push people, right? In 2020, we learned about group cohesion here. Um, all right, uh, again, remember that supervision styles are going to be different. Listen, I'm gonna invite questions here. I do apologize, we went slightly beyond time, but I, I didn't want us to organize another interaction. Uh, I don't think it was necessary. Um, communication will be sent through to you uh, when we have our next ad hoc interaction. Tentatively, next ad hoc interaction is going to be right after you form these groups so that you have an idea of what you should be doing when you are writing this literature, literature synthesis. A literature synthesis that's aligned to an ICT project. We know it's going to be a revision of 2034, but we're gonna be focusing more on aspects to do with, with uh, ICTs. Any thoughts uh, or comments, complaints, questions, queries? I stood there, by the way, I don't know if I'm alone here. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. I've worked with certain groups, right? On groups, I've worked with certain groups where, and I'm saying this because I see there are 28 people here. I've worked with certain groups where, and I observe these things, right? Um, before I joined UNSA, and when I joined the UNSA, when I joined, since I joined the UNSA, I've worked with a total of uh, three cohorts, right? A different program, at least 4014. There are always people, right? 
you're always coming up with an excuse, people not attending sessions and whatnot, you will fall behind. And once you fall behind, you will not actively participate in the project. The problem with that is you will not learn a thing in 2014. Now, I know some of you probably passed 3020 because you were leeching on, on the success of those people that were working hard in 3020. And it's likely that you do the same thing in 4014. But you will fail to deliver once you go in industry. There will be no one to do the work for you once you go in industry. In some instances, they will fire you. In some instances, people will recognize you as a person who is not dependable. In some instances, people, even students, will recognize you as a person who does not know a thing about the course or program that they're teaching. What I'm trying to say here is, if you want to learn, and you should want to learn, if you want to learn, make sure that you are an active participant in ICT 4014. Part of that means you attending these ad hoc seminars that are going to be organized. Part of that means you attending regular supervisor organized interactions. Part of that involves you doing your fair share of the project, right? Doing your equal share as far as the execution of the project is concerned. Not coming up with an excuse every time, right? Anyways, uh, I don't know if there are any questions. Um, questions up. Yes, sir. Uh, so from what I understand, it's going to be uh, the groups and the supervisor who decide the project that you're going to do? Yes. All right, is that in any context, or it, it, is it that it can be anything, or it has to be related to UNSA, or is it just in any no, context? That... No, no, actually, it can be anything as long as uh, it's to do with ICTs. In fact, uh, um, once you are assigned a supervisor, your supervisors will be able to explain these things to you. If, if you want, maybe we can have an ad hoc interaction way, way earlier where, uh, but I don't have to do it. It has to be. Uh, we, we can organize, okay, looks like that's uh, something to do. Uh, I'll liaise with my colleagues to try and see if, uh, if I should have a briefing with you or if they will be able to explain to you what the specifics of this entails. So what's an ad hoc interaction? I don't know what that means. So this will be, it means um, then we don't have uh, predefined lecture sessions to say we'll be having three lectures in a, in a week. Like in 4010, I'm sure whoever is teaching you 4010 has told you to say, we'll have classes Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. In this course, because most of the interaction is a supervisor, there are no set lectures or predefined lectures. These will be organized prior to a major milestone. Tentatively, we'll have lectures organized um, before you start uh, working, towards your, working towards your literature synthesis, before you start working towards your project proposal. And the reason we're having these interactions is so that we explain the assignment and we give you hints on what you should be looking out for as you're working towards these uh, activities. All right, so, so just to be clear, we will not be having lecture sessions uh, or typical lecture session, session like we did last year to just be before milestones? No, yeah, well, it depends on the supervisor, right? So the lecture, the lecture sessions could be viewed as these interactions are going to be, like I'll, I'll tell you one thing, the students I'm going to be working with, they'll be lecture style interactions. Because part of the, part of the reason why that's important is because some projects that will be introduced to the students will be in areas that these people will not be familiar with. And so they'll, they'll need to be introduced to those things. Perhaps I'll need to, to, to teach them some, some aspect of ICTs that they're not familiar with. In some instances, if, if the need arises, maybe the, the supervisor you're working with would, would teach you a particular framework, right? So that it's a lot easier for you to get started rather than you wasting time and going out there. Uh, so it's, I'm saying there will be lectures in courts because these sessions will be dictated by the supervisors. In addition to the ad hoc interactions I'm talking about, interactions you will have with the course coordinator. I hope that answers your question. 
Yeah, it does. Thank you. Excellent. A any other thoughts or comments? Complaints? Uncertainties that you think you have here? Is this, are you confused somewhere? Uh, sir. Sir. Yes. Please go ahead. Uh, you can go ahead. Miss. Yeah, we'll start with Miss Whoopi because she was about to start and then we'll go with, with, with Peter. I think she's had a, a hand raised for quite a while here. Yes. Yeah, sir, so, uh, thank you. Uh, not to bring you back, I just wanted to ask something. Uh, yeah. It's similar to what Peter asked earlier. What if, uh -huh. as a group, uh, you assigned a certain supervisor, but then you feel someone else can supervise you better? Not for any other reason, but then you just feel like that the other person can be of greater help. Are you free to 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 change? No, there's no changing, unfortunately. You'd be assigned. In fact, maybe for this to be transparent, maybe we should do a random draw or something. I don't know. I'll talk to my colleagues here. But but you ought to keep an open mind here. Here's the thing, you have to keep an open mind and for you to get a sense of, of what uh, to answer your question, Miss Whoopi, right, Miss Kawe. There's no changing, you'll be assigned, right? There's no choice. It's just like when you're looking for a job, you, are, you won't choose who to work with here. But to give you an idea of what these people are up to, right? I'm just going to, to give you an idea of what, what you should expect, right? If people, yes. if, if, this, if, if you work with a supervisor who's going to suggest a topic, it is likely they will, they will suggest a topic that is aligned with their areas of the, their research interests, right? So to help you keep an open mind here, I want you to, as, as you're thinking about these things, I want you to look at the Google Scholar profile of these people, right? So that's, uh, I guess I'll just say Piela. I want you to look at the Google Scholar profiles of these people so that you, you see, right, the things that they will likely push you towards, right? Um, there's always, listen, and I know you, it's hard for you to understand this, there's always something to learn from even people that you think, oh no, this person is not going to be good for me or something. I've had to learn that lesson the hard way. The people that have, have only realized that they're useful, they're useful and valuable resources um, after I interacted with them, right? I, I've interacted with all of these uh, three colleagues and I assure you, in my interactions with these colleagues for the last uh, three years for some of them, two years in the case of Piela, there, is, there are wonderful things that you will learn from all of them. And, 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 and I'm not just saying that to, to just sugarcoat things here. I'm saying that because I've picked up, I've learned things from them. Uh, especially people like Tuesday Warrior, for instance, I've interacted with him on, on some projects, right? Um, you know, so, so keep an open mind. And unfortunately, there's nothing like uh, choosing here, Miss uh, Kawe. Peter, yeah, Peter, and then we'll go to uh, Clement. Okay, Peter doesn't seem to want to say a thing. Clement? I don't know if uh, these people mistakenly raised their hands, but I was singling you out because you have your hands raised here. Um, all right. So if there are no comments, uh, we are, yes. Okay, sir, this, this, yeah, it's a serious concern. I just don't know how you can look into it. It's not like uh, we're trying to be difficult or what, but we're also considering the fact that, you know, this is a course whereby if you don't clear it, you won't graduate. And, uh, you know, the way you look at issues, it's different from how uh, other lecturers handle themselves. We're not saying they are bad, but it just differs the way each and every lecturer handles himself and uh, the work at hand. So if, if there's just a way you could look at it and uh, see how best we can be helped, those of us, you know, it's not like we're rejecting all of them. You are five of uh, you are four. So maybe if there's just one whom a certain group is not comfortable with, I mean, you can always find a way 
where it can be switched to another supervisor in i don't know but I will, it's just a request and we hope you can find a way how you can help us yeah there, there are a couple of unfortunate things here you see uh, and i guess you figured some of you have uh, parents and guardians that work at Kunza and you know this already uh, these people that are going to be supervising you don't just teach you and supervise you right some of them supervise master's students some of them supervise phd students some of them have other responsibilities. What I'm trying to say is uh, the distribution of this workload takes into account the fact that these people who are going to be supervising you are doing other things. They're teaching other courses. I'll give you an example of myself, right? Besides coordinating this course, I teach 3020, I teach 1110 as well. I have master's students that I, that I, I, I work with or I supervise, right? So in fact, in an ideal case, I probably should in my case, right, whether or not I'm, I'm, I'm in the group of <laughs> supervisors that you're singling out here, I'm supposed to have fewer, fewer groups here, right? And again, I want to emphasize something here, two things, two points here. Number one, you want to get into the habit of appreciating and understanding the fact that sometimes in life it's difficult to change. Number two, keep an open mind. I assure you, if you think someone was ruthless or someone was maybe... You, 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 you didn't enjoy their lecture style and what, you'd be amazed what sort of interaction you will have with them in 4014. Because it's no longer, you're no longer, look at, I'll give myself as an example. I'm no longer teaching a group of 70 people in 3020. I'll be supervising a group of five students. I'm meeting them every week, five of them. The way I relate to them is going to be different. It's not generic, right? It's like, uh, when you go to, it's like boarding school, right? Because there's mass production of food or something. The, the food is horrible, right? It's different from home where the mom is probably cooking for just uh, four, five, maybe six people or something. But unfortunately though, I don't come up with the rules. That's the other thing. The, the decision to take this approach was a consensus from the department. And it turns out that the same approach, assignment of supervisors, is the approach that's used in RAM 4014 and LIS 4014. Students are assigned supervisors. <clears throat> I hope that uh, clears the air insofar as the assignment and supervision is concerned. Don't worry, you'll be fine. It's, it's going to be fun actually. And at fourth year really, you very, very soon, once you're done with the proposal, you, it turns out that you have more control over the project because you increasingly get to a stage, especially once you get to the implementation part, where you're actively implementing, and so you know slightly more than your, your supervisor, right? The supervisor is probably there just yes, to sir. in the right direction. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, in as much as I hate to say this, but you know, there are some incidences whereby last year, we had the, we are doing everything online. And there are some lecturers whereby we could send emails trying to get some clarification, some guidance and everything. Up to now, those uh, mails haven't been attended to. And now we are looking at this project to be working on this uh, academic year. We, we need their help. So with that experience, in as much as you may say, you no, know, it will be a different uh, uh, situation. But we've been there before, I mean, for the past three years, and we've experienced a similar situation whereby you email the lecturer, you don't get a reply, and you really need their help. So those are some of the concerns we're just trying to raise. I don't know, but anyway, we'll, yeah, so we'll in, take it the way you want us to take in, it. In our defense, it's not me as a department, but in our defense, you know, last year was a crazy year. I think the, the number of lessons that were learned, uh, no one is perfect. Interesting thing about this is one of the reasons why you have a, co a course coordinator for this is there's a, I don't know if, I, I don't want to call this a chain of, a chain of command here, but there's a, a process you go through, right? If, if there's something going on, there's a diplomatic way of uh, going a level up. So if maybe you're not get, getting the help you, 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 you're expecting from your supervisor, uh, maybe you're reaching out to them and they're not, reaching, they're not getting back to you, you get back to the co coordinator and then the course coordinator because uh, they have a relationship, a working relationship with, with his colleagues, will figure out a way of reaching out to them. If the course coordinator is unable to do that, you know what to do in fourth year now, the head of department. If the head of department does not act 
on an issue. And this thing, right? There's a way of anonymously doing them. Uh, if you think that you might be reprimanded or something, um, if the head of department doesn't uh, act on an issue, you go to the dean. If the, if the dean doesn't, and it rarely gets to that stage, if the dean doesn't, you go to the level, right? You understand what I mean? But, but in most instances, by the time it gets to the course coordinator, or the, in fact, my experience is by the time it gets to the HOD level, that issue will be acted on. And you must learn, right? If you haven't figured this out by now, you must learn that at fourth year, you must learn that if something is not being done and you're not getting the help that you need, you've gone through the lecturer, in this case, the supervisor, the course coordinator, go to the HOD. If the HOD doesn't, go to the dean. It rarely, from past experience, it never leaves the school level because, in fact, it never leaves the department because at that level, if, if someone was truly not doing something, um, you know, they, they, they'll probably be taught to do that. Unfortunately, there are certain things that we have no control over, Peter, and, and this is a classic example of something that I, as 4014 coordinator, has no control over. I have no control over the fact that there's a resolution that has, has been made to say we'll have to assign supervisors to students. This is a tradition that has been taking place in the department. I found it. It makes sense actually because the workload needs to be evenly distributed amongst the different course lecturers that are associated or involved with uh, ICT 4014. All right, uh, I hope that answers the question. I'm sorry if, uh, all right, great. Uh, any other thoughts? Yes, uh, good evening, Doc. Yes, Clement. Yes, uh, I wanted to find out in, in, with the group, group selection, will it be done uh, via Moodle like we did with uh, 3020? Yeah, there's an assignment that I'm and putting up. There's an assignment that I'm putting up on Moodle um, where group selection is going to be done, but also, I'm preparing a, a spreadsheet because I know that people, the remote registration thing uh, seems to be a bit of an issue. I was looking up the numbers. Last time I looked them up, only a handful of people had registered. <laughs> In fact, last time I checked, only Master, Master Mwewa had, had accessed the, the ICT 1414 Moodle site, right? Um, so I will also share uh, a publicly accessible spreadsheet that I expect people will use to uh, to specify the different groups, and then I'll manually add the groups on the Moodle uh, on the Moodle site. But submission will be done. Uh, submission of these um, group-based assignments that are graded will have to be done via Moodle. But group selection, um, I'll, I'll confirm once I check if the numbers are still are still low in terms of uh, registration and people that have have managed to access Moodle. Then I'll just take it offline, and then I'll. I'll invite people to do the selection offline and then I'll ask the course representative to, to give us uh, the details we want or something. Please se select the course representative. I hope that answers your question, uh, Clement. Oh yeah, it does. I think you've uh, answered the part where most of us haven't yet been registered, so I was worried about that. But uh, thank you for clarifying to say if uh, you provide a, a provision offline. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. If you're one of those who hasn't registered and you, are, you don't have access to your UNSA email, uh, reach out to me. I will temporarily add people to the mailing list using their personal email accounts. Uh, but at, at some stage, those will be weeded out. <clears throat> All right. Um, any, any other thoughts? I see we are creeping close to one, the one, one hour, the one and a half hours mark. I want to cut this short. Um, if there are no questions, then I suppose uh, I'll see you the next time we are meeting. Um, Sir, oh, yeah. Doc, before you go. Yes, like uh, I, I, just, I just wanted to find out how quick does a group gets uh, a supervisor is it uh, immediately when it's formed they reach out to you so that you assign to them or no there will be a time allocated to when uh, groups will be given supervisors and uh, assuming at that point 
all the groups will be formed and no students will be left. Yeah, so the, the plan is, uh, the plan is, and if, if you're one of those people who did, who did that horrible thing in 2020 where you, you were not part of the group way after the deadline, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage, right? This gets complex, this is serious. So Luxon, to answer your question, right? <clears throat> Supervision will only be done once all the groups have been formed. The deadline for forming groups is March 15th. Between March 15th and March 12th will be March making. Details of which supervisors have been assigned to which groups will be provided on March 12th. After March 12th, it's open season. You get to arrange when you start meeting your supervisors. So again, to answer your question, assignment of supervisors is not immediate. It's only going to be done once all the groups have been formed. So it will be done between March 15th and March 11th. Any other questions? <clears throat> All right, listen, I'm logging out now, but just to mention here, I assure you this is going to be exciting. I've worked on such, well, I, work, I think the most interesting part of my bachelor's program was working on this capstone project. Way, way back in 2000, I did this between 2006 and, and part of 2007 um, because of closures and whatnot. Really interesting, it was exciting. Um, uh, unfortunately, I worked with uh, a supervisor who left me in the deep end. So there was nothing like regular meetings, right? Uh, but it was fine. I had a co-supervisor in the physics department, very helpful. Dr. Chinyama is dead now. Uh, he died a while back. Uh, rest in peace, Dr. Chinyama. But it was exciting. And I'm proud to showcase what I did, right? Uh, I even have um, my project report in the library. Uh, at the time, the things were not being archived digitally, but which reminds me I should scan that thing and put it online or something. So you should be excited about this. Um, it's an opportunity for you to, to, it's gonna be a combination of the things that you've done between first year until now, right? And learn new skills. So it's gonna be exciting. Good luck and uh, see you the next time we are meeting during our order of interaction. For people I'm gonna be working with, I'll see you when we meet the first time. Thanks and good luck with these other courses or electives. Bye, thanks.